Hi guys, if you're traveling to South Korea and you want to experience the true beauty of the Korean nature, I strongly suggest that you travel to Sokcho and specifically to the Soraksan National Park. It's fairly easy to get there uh, if you have a car. Of course, it's the easiest option because you can get there straight away. Otherwise, I suggest that you take the bus from Seoul directly. Um, there is a bus schedule that goes there every hour or every two hours, and it's between two and four hours of commuting. It really depends on the traffic that day. So if there's no traffic, it's going to be super fast. If there is, well, you might take four hours. That's why I think it's actually better to do an overnight stay uh, in the city of Sokcho, which is very close to the national park. So if you decide to stay overnight, there are a lot of very beautiful listings on Airbnb. Actually, most of the places there have a beautiful view over the bay and over the water. And they're fairly cheap. I think we paid like $50 or $60 for one night, which was more than enough for a small studio with beautiful view uh, over the, the whole bay. This is the little studio we rented for a weekend there. It was on the 15th floor with an amazing view on the bay. It was super cheap. We found this on Airbnb and to be honest, I kind of forgot to record a little bit of the of the studio, but yeah, 180 euros, which is under $120. So it was super well placed with the view on the bay. Uh, central, you had like a convenience store right downstairs. And to be honest, the pictures on the Airbnb listing match perfectly with the apartment. It was almost better in real life, to be honest. And so yeah, I can only recommend going there. You had the kitchen you actually even had like a balcony which we yeah to be honest we didn't really use too much we're out and exploring all day but yeah it was absolutely amazing super safe super cheap i guess i'll drop the link to the airbnb and uh yeah check it out so once you have booked your accommodation you need to book the transportation booking the bus is a bit of a pain if you don't have a korean phone number you're gonna have to go to the bus express terminal and book your ticket in person there because you need the Korean phone number and the Korean cards to actually book it online. So it was a bit of a pain on that side, but we made it anyways. We got our tickets. I think it was just probably $30 uh, total price for like the return trip. So to be honest, it, it was fair. So yeah, we made it to Sokcho. Uh, I'm gonna list below some activities that you can do in the city. If you're spending two days there, uh, you go to the national park the second day. So what we did in Sokcho the first night when we arrived is uh, we spent some time at the beach. Uh, we went to the pavilion, which is pretty famous. I think it's on a bunch of Korean dramas as well. There is the lighthouse. Uh, you can go to the food market. Uh, there's a lot of cheap and super good food there. So yeah probably gonna enjoy it. And yeah, I suggest that you go to Soraksan super early in the morning the next day so you can get there by the bus directly that goes from Sokcho City or you can grab a taxi. Taxis are okay, like the, the price is, is fair. Uh, I think it's gonna be like $8 or $9 just to go to the, the national park. So, And it's about 20, 30 minutes uh, by taxi. And once you get there, you have the option to go into many trails. So the park is huge. It's uh, really stunning. It's surrounded by mountains everywhere. And you can choose whether you want to do a beginner trail or a very advanced trail. Or the easiest option of all is to grab the cable car and just go to the top of the cable car. Uh, we decided we wanted to go the, the hard way <laughs> without actually realizing how hard it would be. So we picked the Ubavazi Rock Trail. I think that was the name of it. And on Google it was like, oh, it's a for intermediate intermediate level hikers. So we were super positive, like confident about how hard it would be. And actually it was really hard. We suffered a lot. So don't do the same mistake that we did. Just get there prepared, take some water, take, take some proper hiking clothes, uh, hiking shoes. We saw some people that actually climbed there in Crocs, like old Korean grandmas. I think they're, they're next level, you know, you cannot compare yourself to them. So <laughs> it's not gonna happen. So yeah, grab your best hiking outfit and some water, some food, and you get there early. So from there, you'll see the first things that you'll see on the way are beautiful Buddhist temples. Uh, it's, it's really stunning. It's the first time we saw temples that look like that. And it was really peaceful and quiet in the middle of the mountain. And as you keep on climbing, the trail gets just progressively harder and harder. At the beginning, the path is really easy to go by. Like the roads are very smooth and like everything seems Seems like it's gonna be okay, but as you go by, <laughs> there's more and more staircases and rocks on the road, and yeah, it, it gets more and more complicated as you progress. Um, in kind of, I think it was in the middle of the way, you're gonna see another Buddhist temple that is kind of hidden between rocks. It's absolutely stunning. You should just, you should definitely just stop by there and yeah, 
just grab some drinks from the fresh fountain and experience the, the yeah the true beauty of those temples from there you still have probably half of the way to go through <laughs> they make it look like it's only a couple met meters left i think it's like 600 or 900 so you're like you're gonna be like super confident or like oh only 900 i'm gonna do it worst 900 meters of your life to be honest the staircases are super super intense and it's gonna be only staircases until you reach the top so it's a it's a very very long journey uh, a lot of people just stop there to be honest you don't have to go all the way to the top but if you want to have the beautiful view and see like yeah all the landscapes surrounding and you're gonna see the whole bay as well so the sea from there so i think it's it to be honest it was really worth it so we kind of suffered a bit for like one two hours and then we made it to the top so the whole hike was probably two hours and a half to three hours just to get there and Getting back was actually much faster, but we were so tired that we decided to just take our time and we stopped uh, by the rivers, we decided to try and go in the water, but it was too cold, so almost got my, my feet frozen there. <laughs> so wouldn't always recommend, especially if it's not the summer when you get there. But overall, beautiful experience. You can grab some food when you get back. Uh, there's a few restaurants at the center, uh, at the entrance of the park, so... There is enough if you don't have anything with you or yeah you're still starving when you get there and yeah then rest of the day if you're tired i just suggest you do the same as we do we just grab a taxi back and we spend the whole day at the beach sleeping because we were just exhausted from the day let me know if you actually experience it uh how was your experience there and if you'd like to go again thanks for watching and talk to y'all later